Let Jesus be glorified. Let every soul be subject unto the higher power. And we just give you glory, honor, and praise as the anointing and the words of God come forth tonight with life in them that will change us and we will be transformed in God's image and likeness. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Glory to God. We're going to go right into our song service tonight. We're going to ask uh, Minister Yuri if he was, Brother Yuri, if he would tear, carry us into the uh, song service tonight. Amen.
Jesus Christ is glorified. 
Let us pray. Father, we come into your presence with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. We thank you, Lord, for this day. For this is the day that thou hast made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. God, I bless your people today. I release blessings upon your people today, today, Lord. And God, I come against every wicked and tormented spirit that will come against their hearts and their mind. I rebuke it and I loose it from its assignment concerning them now in Jesus' name. Father, I bind every spirit of fear, doubt, and unbelief. I bind it up in this place right now in the name of Jesus. And I release the spirit of faith in this place. God, you said that we should walk by faith and not by sight. So, Father, I bind the spirit of faith in this place today. Let it rest upon your hearts and upon the mind, upon the will, and upon the emotions of the people tonight. And I give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you. It is so good to have you with us tonight. And I pray that God will speak to each of our hearts. Amen. Good to see you back again, Mr. Carlos. Amen. All the way from New York. Glory to God. The Big Apple. <laughs> Good to have you with us, sir. Amen. You and your lovely wife. Amen. So we want to just uh, uh, go, she, sing a song. We're going to sing a song, then we're going to go right into our service tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, we serve a good God. Oh, and I just love him, boy. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm going to release the anointing in this place tonight. Prepare your hearts. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
the Spirit, the anointing, to lift burdens and destroy yokes, set the captives free. Sunday night, Wednesday morning, and Saturday night. I mean, Saturday, Wednesday night and Saturday night. Amen. Amen. Now, you know, in order for me to keep going like that, I have to be fed myself. Amen. I have to be strengthened. Amen. Amen. Well, this weekend, I want y'all to know that I'm going to be getting my spiritual food. Hallelujah. Amen. And I, I don't want y'all, uh, I want y'all to, to, to come to church and do what you're supposed to do. Okay, Mr. Yuri, <laughs> amen, Sister uh, 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 Shepherd, amen, Sister Alona, amen, uh, I can't say Pastor Oak because she's going to be with me and she'll be back Saturday night, she'll be back Saturday night to handle Saturday night service, amen, and uh, she probably going to be ministering Sunday also, so, uh, Yes, it's, this is Father's Day, so she's... No, it's next Sunday's Father's Day. Yeah, third Sunday, not this coming Sunday. It's third Sunday. We still have got another week out. Amen. That's the time you should be here, sir. Father's Day. Amen. Amen. 
because we're gonna have a we're gonna have a that might by the way, uh, you women prepare to prepare yourself to prepare some food. Because we're gonna have like a potluck on Father's Day after service. We're gonna have a little fellowship. Amen. Amen. Where we can fellowship and just minister to one another. Amen. And and uh, can I help you? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Uh, but the thing about it is that uh, we're gonna have, we're gonna we're gonna have a little fellowship and everything on that day, and we want you all to uh, take part in it. Amen. The women, we want y'all to cook some foods. We want y'all to prepare some things, you know, and just uh, get ready. And also, uh, and also, uh, I want to thank all of you for stepping up to the plate. Remember, I talked to you about my television program, and I said that we mentioned at the beginning of the, when we first started, and only one family been faithful in doing it for the, for the since we've been doing the television. We have one family been faithful in that, in supporting it, $25 a month, every month. Amen. And so I mentioned it, and now there was two other families, uh, and i like to thank God for, those that, that uh, Sister uh, Marie, I'd like to thank you. And uh, Richard, uh, I'd like to thank him for stepping up to the plate. Amen. Amen. You know, God is doing something <laughs> that is so good, and people are getting in on it. Because there's, an, a, there's, a, there's a blessing in being a part of what God is doing. There's a blessing in being a part of what God is doing. Amen. Amen. And uh, we have people already starting to send uh, money for the tent. You know, and i like to encourage you that are viewed by the Internet, uh, don't think that because we are a small church that we don't make a difference. God looks at us just as much as he looks at the big churches. Amen. And we want you to take part in Giving and receiving. Amen. Because when you give to what God is saying that he won't done in the earth, then God is going to bless you tremendously by, uh, by, by doing, for doing so. Amen. I learned that a long time ago. When God has a project going on, get involved with what God is doing, and God will get involved with what you're doing. Amen. I, I remember when you know, that was families that was having problems, they're having trouble. And so, and there was a big project came up in the church. And so that family, they planted some seed, of, 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 they, they, they planted a nice seed into the work that God was doing. Then all of a sudden, within a few, within a little, a short time, period of time, then they saw that thing that they was believing God to do, they saw that all this stuff started to turn around. Oh, my God. You see, when you get involved with what God is doing, God will get involved with what concerns you. Amen. Amen. When you get involved with what concerns God, God get involved with what concerns you. I remember, you know, uh, uh, my, my man of God, he always, you know, he, he always asked us to come out to the farm and help with the, help with the, the, the fences and all that stuff and, and, and clean up around that stuff. And I did that willingly, faithfully, and there was no charge to it. Amen. Amen. Because every time I sold into that man of God, God always came back and blessed me. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. You see, I'm not asking you to do something that I've never done. When God blessed me, it was because I was involved in what he was doing. God wants to bless you, but he's not going to bless someone that is stingy. You be stingy, be a tightwad, guess what's going to happen? You're going to get what you've been getting all along. But if you be willing and cheerful to, re to, to, to be a blessing to what God is doing, then God will be a blessing to you. Go over there and turn number one down just a little bit. Number one, pull it down just a little bit. She got me burning pretty hot over there. I hear a little ringing. One all the way over. Oh, that's too much. A little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more. Thank you. That's good right there. Good. Amen. Amen. Now, that stopped the ringing. I don't like the ringing. I, I just can't handle that.
But I want you to know that God is wanting to get involved with us. God wants you to be able to stand your ground. Amen. Now, what better way you can stand your ground and, and then get involved with what God is doing? Amen. That's a good way to stand your ground. We've been, I mean, we've been dealing with this area. How many know the first scripture we start off in this area? Who, who? Oh, you remember? Yeah. Ephesians what? Six Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Let's go there. Amen. The book of Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Hallelujah. Now, in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10, you see, we are being equipped. We are being equipped in God's army to stand against the powers of darkness. Now, God is not calling you to be wimps. God is not calling you to be a spine, have a, a rubber backbone. <laughs> you don't see this Bible with a rubber backbone? They can bend themselves all kind of ways. Amen. They can ball up into a knot and they lay down on their stomach and they fit over their head like this. Yeah. Them, them rubber backbone people. <laughs> Amen. They use them kind of people in circuses and stuff like that. <laughs> but God wants you not to have a rubber backbone. God wants you to have a strong backbone. Amen. A strong backbone. And so we are, listen, we, we, we're going into the things of God not, not as uh, unknowing, but we're going in the things of God knowing who we are, knowing our position, and knowing where we stand in God. Amen. I want you to look at with me uh, chapter 10, chapter 6, and verse number 10. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. I still hear that ringing. And in the power of his might. Go all the way up on that number one. That's a little black knob up there. Turn it back a little bit. The other way. Thank you. Oh, that's too high. That's the wrong way. Now you come. Now you come. That's it. That's it. A little bit more. A little more. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. So he says here in verse number 10, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. And in the power of his might. And then he goes on and said, Put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God. Amen. You see, God is preparing you to stand your ground. Amen. 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 You cannot stand your ground uh, trying to fight an enemy that is too powerful for you. From the, you know, from the beginning, we know that this enemy, it, we are no match for him from a natural standpoint because this is a spiritual enemy. Amen. He is an enemy that has great power. And anyone say different, they, 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 they're, they're food. Amen. The devil is nothing to play with. So we have to understand who we are and where we stand in God when we are confronted by the enemy. That we will not be overcome by the enemy. Amen. You know, I, I've heard some, some, some things and that, that, and, and concerning the men of God that have, they have come and gone on before us. I've heard how many of them start out very strong in the things of God. But they finish, their finish wasn't strong at all. They finish, like you said, shipwrecked. They finish, they finish, but they finish defeated. I don't want to be defeated in my walk with God. I know what, what's out there, and I know the tools that the enemy uses to, to attack me. I'm not a ignorant concerning the devil's devices. And God do not want you ignorant concerning the devil's devices. Amen. You know, you know the thing that, that the devil used to that is that you 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 don't even have to look for it. It's already it's always around you. The very thing that he can use to trip you up is always in front of you. To try to get your attention that you will yield to it, and once you yield to it, then you stumble and fall. And then you wonder, why did I do that? It's because you paid attention, a little more attention to something you shouldn't have been paying attention to. Amen. 
We are called to be strong in the Lord and not in the things of the world. The things of the world, they are there, but they are there to, they are there to be a, a, of help to you, not for you to take part in it, for you to uh, 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 act as though you can be like everyone else and do everything everyone else is doing and, and not be affected. I tell you, if a dog go outside and play long enough, that dog will come back with some fleas on it. Amen? You see, there's no way that you can be a pig and go around a hog, go around the hog trough, and there's a lot of mud, and you not get in it. They love mud. <laughs> Amen. They want to get in that mud. Amen. So we can't. There are certain things that we cannot partake of and maintain our strength as children of God. We have to watch what we're doing. We have to watch what we're saying. We have to watch the people that we keep company with. Amen? Because it only take a little leaven to leaven the whole lump. Amen? It only take one little fox to spoil the whole vine. Amen? So we have to be careful in our life as children of God because there's an enemy that is out to steal, kill, and destroy. Amen? And that's why he said, Find my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. Amen. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. Notice what is it? That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, how are you going to stand against the wiles of the devil? With standing in God's armor. Amen. In God's armor. Now, when you put on God's armor, you when you looked upon, you don't they don't see you, but they see him that hath called you. Hallelujah. Amen. You see you are clothed from your foot up. Amen. You even got something over your head. No, they can't even see your natural hair because you have a helmet on. Glory to God. Amen. And they can't even see your chest because you have a breastplate on. Hallelujah. They can't see your legs because you have a uh, shields on your legs. Amen. They can't even see your, they can't, they, you know what I'm telling you, you your, your, your shoulder is protected. The only thing that's not protected is your neck. <laughs> so you don't let nobody get to your neck. <laughs> Amen. That's why we have to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Even we, even even when we when we when we come up with God's arm, we have a belt on that is so strong that it can hold up the weight of a big sword. And when you pull that sword out of His sheath, shh. Oh, can you see my sword in my hand? <laughs> huh? Yes, that's right. The spirit of the word of God is my sword. Amen. That's why we have to uh, uh, meditate in the word day and night that we will be able to use that word as a skillful soldier. Amen. You know, you can, you can learn the word. You can quote the word. You can do, you know, but if you don't have the spirit of the word, all you have is just word. There has to be a, the spirit of the word. And that don't come by living in a kind of way. The spirit of the word come in your life by you living the way God called you to live. Amen. That will give the word life within you. Amen. Because, see, there's a lot of people can quote the Bible. There's a lot of people can quote the Bible. And they use it against you. But if you have that same ability to quote the Bible and you are full of the Spirit, guess what? Every time they raise up and try to quote something to use against you, you can take the Spirit of God. You see, 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 we, we're, we're to live by faith. You see, 
They can do. They can show you their works by. They can show you their deeds by their works, and I'll show you mine by my faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. You see, because I'm not called in this earth to stand against uh, 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 the, 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 the people that is walking around here every day. Even though some of them are very rude. <clears throat> some of those people are very mean. But they are not my enemy. <clears throat> my enemy is the one that is compelling them to act that way. Your enemy is the one that is compelling them to act that way. You can overcome them. How? By the blood of the Lamb. <clears throat> and by the word of your testimony. You have to keep a firm, a firm walk with God in order to have a testimony. <clears throat> you know, it's one thing for them, for you to be talked about for doing wrong. They are speaking justly of you. But it's another thing for them, for them to talk about you when you know that it's a lie. Amen. Mm. Amen. Hallelujah. Because now you got power with God over your enemy. Amen. You see, now we have to understand that we've been called to be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. I don't have to try to fight the devil in my strength, in my power. No. Amen. No. What kind of power I have Amen. without Christ? Amen. I don't have nothing without Christ. Not even a tiny bit. Amen. 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 Because the Bible said my righteousness before God is as a filthy rag. Amen. Amen. But when I am clothed in his righteousness, glory to God. When I am clothed in his righteousness, now I am able to see God as he sees me. Strong in the Lord. There you go, sir. There you go. Amen. Glory to God. That's, that's good. That's good. I'm, I'm glad to see you doing that. Amen. Because God is trying to speak to your heart and the enemy is trying to trying to keep you from hearing it. Amen. God has given you a weapon which positions you way above your enemy. God has given you a weapon which positions you way above your enemy. Hallelujah. Because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. See, we don't have to be ashamed of our game. Because we have someone that is playing, that is that's showing us how to play fair. Amen. We don't have to cheat. Amen. Because the battle is not theirs, but it's ours. Amen. The victory is ours. The battle is the Lord's, but the victory is ours. I said that backwards a while ago. <laughs> I had to correct that. Amen. 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 The battle is the Lord's, but the victory is ours. And what, what, how, we, how do we walk in the victory? By being clothed in the whole armor of God. Being clothed in the whole armor of God. Stop depending on, stop depending on your own strength to overcome the powers of the, the enemy. So many people are defeated daily because they are dependent on their own strength. And, and there's nothing they can do to, with the devil in their own strength. Even Michael, when he was when he was having a come when he was contending for Moses' body, he had to say, "Devil, the Lord rebuke you." He dared not raise an accusation against the, 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 the against Lucifer. He said, "The Lord rebuke you." Yeah. Amen. Amen. So when we understand the thing, when we understand some things, we can see that God has given us the power to overcome the powers of the enemy. Hallelujah. How are we going to do that? By walking in his armor. Walking in his armor. God does not intend for you to face your enemy and be defeated. The Bible said in John 10, chapter 10, chapter 10, verse 10, it said, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill, and to destroy. But it goes on to say, but I come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. 
You see, now that showed me that God is not only concerned about me being able to stand in the physical, in the in the strength of the word, but He's able. He wants me to be able to stand in the finances because when you talk about abundance, you talking about something that's going to keep you over. That's something going to put you over in life, and not something that the enemy going to use to bring you down. Amen. Because God said that you that that He that He wants you to have life and that more abundantly. Amen. You see, we have been given not a spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, the spirit of love, and the spirit of a sound mind. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to his name. You see, we have to understand some things here. Amen. See, we try to put limitations on an unlimited God. We try to put limitations on an unlimited God. See, God is not limited by our lack of understanding, our lack of knowledge. We make him limited because we do not do our part by studying to show ourselves approved. That what, that what limits God with us not knowing who we are and what God has given us and that we will walk in that knowledge. That what limits God. God did not limit himself when it comes to pouring out himself toward uh, 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 in you. Everything that God is is in you. Amen. Amen. Everything that he is is in you. God has given you everything that you need to be an overcomer in this life. Amen. He has given you everything to be an overcomer in this life. He shed his his son shed his blood that you may have a right to the tree of life. Amen. That you may come boldly into the throne of grace. That you may obtain mercy when there's a need in your life. Grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. So we have we have been given. We have been given weapons. We have been given weapons in, in, in which, which position us way beyond our enemy. Amen. 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 So we don't have to face our enemy with fear. Amen. We can face our enemy knowing that we are conquerors and more than conquerors through Amen. Christ Jesus, which strengthens us. Amen. The Bible says in, 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 in uh, 1 John 4 and 4, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If God is in you, now, let me tell you something. You got everything that you need to do what God has called you to do. Amen. You can accomplish even though the thing that seems to be un, un, unconquerable. You can conquer it. Amen? Amen. Because you're not operating in your ability. You're operating in his ability. Because to operate in your ability, you're defeated already because you've not done what God said do. God said be strong in him, not in you. You see, he said for you to be strong in him and not in yourself. To, be, to try to be strong in yourself, you're walking in disobedience. You're walking in disobedience. You're already defeated because you're trying to do things in your own strength. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord. In the Lord. Amen? Because that's where the power is. It's in the Lord. That's where the power is. When you come, when, when, see, see to, conquer, when, to conquer your enemy, you got to know you have an enemy. Because a lot of people walk around saying, well, I don't believe in no devil, and I don't believe in no demons. You know, and I'm saying, well, I know, who, I know, what, I know what's controlling your life then. <laughs> when they're going to talk to me like that, I already know. See, they have, they have allowed me to identify them right there when they talk like that. Amen. When I don't believe no devil, and I don't believe there's no hell. You just showed me who you hang around. Number of demons. Amen. Amen. So we are not to be ignorant of Satan's vice. Jesus confronted Satan and defeated him by speaking the written word of God. He did not look at Satan and try to defeat him in his own spirit. Notice he never did anything until he heard the Father say it. Unless he saw his Father do it first. Jesus saw his father defeating Satan. That's why he was able to defeat Satan. When did Jesus see his father defeating Satan? When the Satan tried to exalt his throne. When he tried to exalt himself. When he said, I will be like the most high. Oh, really, huh? 
I beheld Satan as he fell from heaven. Amen. I'm telling you, we have been given victory over the powers of the enemy. Not only you've been given victory, you have authority. You have authority. You don't have to be, you don't have to wonder. Amen. He has planted for you to confront your enemy wherever you may be, wherever you go. If you have to, if you've been confronted by your enemy, God never meant for you to run and hide. When you're confronted by your enemy, you don't have to go and duck down trying to get, get out of sight. God wants you to stand your ground. I'm telling you, you 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 can go to you can go to some places. I, I was in a in a in a in a, let me just say I was in an Apple store. I was in an Apple computer in the Apple store, and there was a man came in there. Uh, he had uh, uh, tattoos all on his legs and on his arms and everything. And I looked at him. I looked at him, and then all of a sudden he looked back at me, and and he and he would he would he would he would kind of kind of shaky and, I, and because I wasn't shaking I look at the devil what he is yeah. amen I look at him for what he is I just looked at him you know he's going to look at me I look back at him yeah. yeah and you know what he turned ahead and went on the other way yeah, he, he couldn't he couldn't stand it amen. he couldn't stand it why because I stand my ground in Christ Jesus yeah. amen no weapon formed against me shall prosper. You have to know who you are. That when the enemy is confronted, when you are confronted by the enemy, that you will not allow fear to enter your... See, some people look at you because they've been demon-possessed. They look at you and they try to pump fear into you. You ever see somebody look at you and then they're going to look real mean? This way that man looked at me yesterday. Trying to try to look mean. I look back here, uh-huh. What's up here? You know? <laughs> you, want, you want some of this? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. See, God, God, sent, God sent forth his word into the earth, and it will not return unto him void. See, when we use the word of God skillfully, the word of God will not return to him void. Amen. That's why we have to understand when we are confronted by an enemy, we are to stand on the word of God because that gives you the power over your enemy Amen. to allow your mind to, to, to look reflect on your past when you was being bullied. How many of you have been bullied before? You ever been bullied? Yeah, you know, day. huh? I said one day. Yeah. See, see, when you're in school, them giants and those big men, they want to thump you on the head. They want to take your lunch money. And they want to make you afraid of them. Huh? <laughs> 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 yeah, sometimes, yeah. <laughs> that too. <laughs> Amen. But the thing about it is that the thing about it is that when you grow up, you recognize what was doing, what was taking place there, and now you you're not going to let it happen no more. That's what you got to understand about the enemy. He bullied you because you did not have the I you did not have the knowledge of who you are as a child of God. He bullied you. And now that you're coming into the knowledge as the son and the daughter of God, you don't have to be bullied no more. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Glory. Amen. Because now you can walk because you have been given the robe of righteousness. Amen. You can come out of your hiding place because you've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. And John, I like what John chapter 10, chapter 14 and verse 10 says. Let me just look over here. I want you to just turn over there. Because, see, you got to understand this thing. 
Because God is calling you to understand who you are. He said in John chapter 14 and verse 10, he said, Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. You see, when you realize that you are in the Father, and the Father in you, that devil knows that he's losing a stronghold in your life. Because you are no, you have been, he is no match for you now. Amen. Because you, he found out that you finally come to the knowledge of who you were. Amen. When you come to the knowledge of who you are in Christ Jesus, that never knows that he's lost a stronghold. He's lost a good one because the same way that you are good in, in serving him, you're going to be twice as good serving God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was a good, I was a good uh, sinner. sinner. <laughs> I used to go in the clubhouses and I used to sing. Them people coming in there and they jumping out on the place full of joy because they all drinking all this stuff. Now I can go. I don't have to go to the club to sing no more. I can go to the house of God and I can release the anointing and this sets people free now. Instead of bringing them into bondage. The people can be set free now because of their, because of their anointing upon my life. Amen. God wants you to be used by him in these last days to set the captive free. Not to take part in their captivity. He wants you to walk free, and he wants you to set them, help them to be set free. Yeah. And how are you going to do that? How are you going to do that? By seeing yourself the way God sees. See, you can face your enemy, and you can face your battle with all of heaven backing you up. You can face your battle with all of heaven backing you up. How are you going to do that? By realizing that you've been born of the blood, you've been washed in the blood, and you've been born of the Spirit of God. See, that was a man of the Pharisee that came to Jesus about night and said, Master, how can a man be born again when he's old? Can he enter the second time to his mother's womb? And Jesus said, except a man be born again, he will not enter into the, into the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. See, God wants us to understand that when we come into the kingdom, the kingdom comes within us. When we come into the kingdom, the kingdom comes within us. Amen? So now, this man, he said, well, how can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time to his mother's womb? And Jesus replied again, he said, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot, now notice this time, you cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Amen? Amen? The, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 20, that the kingdom of heaven is in, it's not in word only, but it's in power. Amen? Amen? So we know that when we are coming to the kingdom of heaven, we are coming into the realm of power. Amen. This is a power that the world don't have. But because we have Christ, the hope of glory, within our hearts, we come into, a, 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 we come into an inheritance of divine power. Hallelujah. Divine power to demolish the powers of the dark of the enemy. Yeah. For this is the purpose that the Son of God was manifest, yeah. that he might destroy right. the works of the devil. 1 John 3, 8. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We have been given the tools to overcome every attack that the enemy brings against us. And how do we overcome those things that come against our mind? By casting down every vain imagination that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Oh, hallelujah. And bringing every thought into captivity to the Holy Ghost. Amen. You see, we have been given divine tools. Divine tools. And how do we get them? By receiving of his divine nature. Amen. When we receive his divine nature, we receive his divine abilities. Amen. 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 You see, I can walk on water now. Woo. When at one time, water just wet me up. Now I can walk on it. Glory Amen. to God. Amen. 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 Let it start raining outside. <laughs> I want to walk on that water. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 But, 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 if, but from a spiritual standpoint, in, in, the, in the storms, in the situation, I can walk on this. I can walk in the midst of the storm. I can walk in the midst of the situation, and it'll not affect me. It might slow me down, but it won't stop me. Amen. So can you. So can you. Oh, hallelujah. 
So can you. You can overcome every attack that the enemy brings against you because the Bible says in John chapter 14 and verse 10, believest thou not that I'm in the Father? See, I got to see myself in him. I got to see myself in him because when I see myself in him, I can realize my position in him. You see, if I can't see myself in him, I can never see my position in him. Are you understanding what I'm saying? If I see my position, if I see myself in him, I can see myself seated with him in heavenly places. According to the book of Ephesians chapter 2. I'm seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Amen. And so when I when I, so therefore I got to see that I got to see myself abiding in him. Amen. And look at verse uh, John chapter 14, verse number 10 again. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? He said, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the work. You see, and, and when Jesus came to, when Jesus asked the disciples, who do men, who, 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 have I been so long time with you, and yet you have not known me? Amen. You see, Jesus he been with the disciples. He was with the disciples, but still they find it hard to understand who he was. Amen. Amen. See, the Bible says in John chapter 14, verse 1, it says, what it says in verse number four, verse number one. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, you believe also in me. For in my father's house are men and mentions. And if it was not so, I would have told you. But now I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, notice what he said, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Amen? There you may be also. But and Philip said, but, but, but Lord, we know, not, we, know whether, we know not whether or not good, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said in verse number 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man come to the Father but by me. You see, that show me that my abiding in him and him abiding in me is very important. I will not be able to overcome the enemy outside of him. Because it's not my strength, it's not my abilities, it's his strength and it's his abilities working in me and through me to bring me to the place of victory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. See, I don't have to wonder who I am. I know who I am. I am a child of the King. I've been born of the Spirit of God. I've been washed in the blood. I've been, oh, glory to God. I've been set free from the powers of darkness. Amen. I've been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the light of His dear Son. Amen. I'm a holy nation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar person. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. So when I look at this, I see myself the way God sees me. God wants you to see yourself. God wants you to see yourself because there's work for you to do. There's work for you to do. Amen. So you got to begin to see yourself the way God sees you. Now, when I look at this, when I see this in verse number 8, he said, Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffices us. And Jesus said unto him, Philip, Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet have thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen the Father has seen me. Amen. He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou, show us the Father? You see, we got to understand that when we're looking at Jesus, we are actually looking at God. Oh, yes. Yes. Amen? Amen? And now, he's in us. So when the world is actually looking at us, if we are truly living the way God called us to live, yes. when the world looks at us, they are actually should be able to see Jesus. Oh, you hear me, Yuri? They should be able to see Jesus in us. Amen? Because we are his representatives in the earth. 
Amen. Yes. See, when I come into this place, I enter into my kingdom. Yes. Amen. Where I am the ambassador. The kingdom of heaven is here. Yes. Amen. Yes. What that tells me that I am set now in a position of authority because I am a representative of the Most High. Amen. Amen. Therefore, I have been given the ability to rule and reign in life as king and priest. Amen. Glory, to Glory to God. Amen. So when the enemy tried to come against me, I don't have to fight my battle. What did Jesus say? If my king was of this world, then my soldiers would, my, 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 my followers would, would, would defend me. But because my kingdom is not of this world, mm, glory to God. Y'all understand what I'm saying? We have been given God's ability by seeing ourselves in the word the way God sees us. We are overcomers. We are overcomers. You see, you might think that we don't know nothing. This young boy right here, when, as he continue in this church, and as he continue to listen to this word, he's going to receive by the Spirit, because the Spirit of God is in him. And when the enemy come against him, he can speak the word of God, and that enemy that is coming against him will have to flee. Amen? Well, well, how can a boy do that? Well, the same way you do it. You see, because God is not going to allow that little child to be overcome, because he, that little child got more faith than you got. You put that little child up on this thing and say, jump. He's going to jump and not worry about no kind of fear or whatever. We, we stand you up and you say, jump. That's too far down. You're going to complain about it. It's, it's too far to jump. I might hurt my leg or something. <laughs> that little boy going to jump. Amen. So we know that God is going to do something powerful because he's equipping us to keep our armor on. Amen. See, when we... Confront and conquer Satan. We have to confront and conquer Satan, not by looking at him, not by uh, trying to stare him down, because that won't do it. We'll only overcome him by the word. You don't build your house upon the sand. You find a good foundation to build your house on. That the word will speak to you. And that the word will cause you to stand regardless of what's going on around you. Amen. The word is your strength. Oh, hallelujah. My time is up. I want to preach some more. <laughs> but I'm not going to. I'll save it for next Wednesday. Amen. Amen. I'm not going I'm not finished with this. This is number four. I'm not finished with this message yet. Because I want you to begin to see yourself the way God sees you. Amen. God sees you strong. God sees you as overcomers. God wants you to stand your ground and not to give in to the enemy. Not let the enemy take control over your family, over your children. Amen. Over your household. God, you know, you may not be able to you, you might be you may not be able to to, to uh, talk them out of doing some things that they want to do, but that don't mean you have to stop going before God on their behalf. Amen. You can take them before God, and by speaking the word of God, their life can be changed. Remember those prayers that I taught you in the book of Ephesians? We're going to teach them again on next Wednesday night because this is part of standing your ground. 
This is part of what you go. This is part of the lesson. What you gonna need to stand your ground. Learn how to pray the scripture. It's the scripture that's gonna release the life and the nature of God. <laughs> oh my God, y'all are tickling me up here. <laughs> Amen. But it's the standing on the scripture is what's going to cause your children to be set free. You can break curses off your children by you standing on the promises of God. Amen. You can break them. You can cause uh, these ungodly relationships to stop if you will stand on the promise of God. We're going to be talking about that on next Wednesday. Amen. We're going to be talking. We're going to be getting into this area on next Wednesday because God is wanting his people to realize that, that we have been given the power to quench the violence of fire of the enemy. Amen. 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 With the word of God. The word of God is your fire extinguisher. Yes. Amen. 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 The word of God is your fire extinguisher. It'll, 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 it'll put out the hell fire that's coming against you. Amen. It'll put out the hell fire that's coming against your household. Use the word. Sprinkle it with love. Season it with the Holy Ghost. And put a little salt and pepper on it. <laughs> oh my God. Y'all just look at me sometimes and say, Pastor, where are you coming from? I'm coming from. Yeah, I hadn't eaten none of that. The day was our fast today, remember? Yeah. The juice fast on Wednesday. How many still fasting? You didn't do it today? You forgot about it, huh? Uh, no problem, no problem. But I did mine. I did mine. Amen. Father, we thank you for this blessing today. We thank you, Lord God, that your work will not return for it, but it will accomplish that what you sent it out to do. Now, Father, I ask you, Lord, that as we have come to this place on this fourth lesson, God, that we will stand our ground. Let us not stand, Father, uh, weary at heart. But let us stand, Father, knowing that we have been given the power over all the powers of the enemy, according to your word, Luke 10, 19. Father, and I thank you, Lord God, according to Mark chapter 16 and verse 20, that you went with us as we stand on your word. Because you went with us confirming your word with sign following I thank you for it, Father, in the Jesus' name. And you say, Father, these signs shall follow them that believe in your name. They shall cast out devil, they shall speak in the tongue, they shall take up servant. And if they drink any dead thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Father, we believe that as we walk and confront our enemy without fear and trembling, that we will be able to operate in these principles that you laying out before us. That we will not allow fear to torment our hearts and our minds. But we will be strong in you, Lord God. And we will recognize, Father, that as we wake up daily and put on that whole armor, Father, that we will find out that our day will even go even better. And when the enemy come against us trying to pull us over on the highway, trying to give us tickets, we remind you, Father, of what we have done on their behalf, praying for the laws and the lawmakers and and, the, and those that enforce the law. And Father, when they come up to try to deceive us, you show us, Father, you've shown us that we have power with you. And because we see our enemy is not prevailing over us, we know that we have peace with you. And that we have power with you. Because our enemy cannot prevail against us. We thank you for that now in Jesus' name. I bless your people, Father. And I give you glory and praise for him in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go ahead with our tithes and offering. Amen. Let's go ahead and take about our tithes and offering. Hallelujah. You know, this is a season of seed time and harvest. You know, I planted, I've been planting good seed this month. And I'm going to plant another good seed. Because I'm believing God for miracles. Amen. I'm believing God for miracles. And, and God is showing me 
that because I'm a cheerful giver, that every need is met. And God wants you to be that cheerful giver. How many of you tired of struggling financially? You tired of struggling financially? Then just do like I do. Plant some good seed into the into God's house. Amen. Plant some good seed in God's house. Because I tell you, I tell you, my business, my business has doubled. Amen. It's about to triple. Because I'm planting good seed in God's house. God said, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall be given to your bosom. Amen. And don't y'all forget, we believe in God for uh, for that tent. Amen. We believe in God for that tent. And I know that when all of us start pulling together, planting seed toward that, we will be able to see that thing come to pass faster than we can imagine. Amen. And so all of you that are listening to us by the internet, God is dealing with your heart by planting seed in this church. Well, this is some good fertile ground that you are looking at. Amen. Because we are doing what God has said for us to do. Amen. We are not taking this money and using it for our own personal use. That's why God blessed my business. So I won't take the money. My business is blessed. I don't take God's money. Amen. I use God's money for God's kingdom work. Amen. So if you plant seed into this ministry for a specific purpose, you can count on every dollar going to that particular purpose. Amen. So Father, we thank you. And God, I pray that as we prepare our hearts and as we purpose in our heart to plant a certain amount toward that tent God you're going to cause it to come to pass because you see the motive of our heart and you see that it's not selfish you see the motive is pure and it's to benefit the kingdom of God and the souls that are running in the streets that are waiting for such a person like me to come out to greet them with the gospel. God, I know that I'm not the only one that, that do what I'm what you're calling me to do. I know there's many men that you've dealt with their hearts to go and to have outside meetings. But God, I'm willing. I'm willing to do it, Father. And I and I don't mind doing it. I want to go and do it. So, Father, I call in that money now. I call in that tent, a 40 by 60 tent, or bigger, nothing smaller, a 40 by 60. I call it in now, and I call in the sound equipment. I call in the, 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 the platform and the podium. I call in the, the chairs. I call in every tent pig and every tent pole and every tent rope that comes with it. In the name of Jesus. I call in the side for the tent. So when the wind begins to blow, we begin to put the sides down. And Father, if it's too hot, I call in the air conditioner for that tent. In Jesus' name. That we can cool the people. Don't have to sit out there burning up. I call it in, Father. In Jesus' name. Father, I know this is not something that I'm just taking upon myself. I believe with all my heart that you spoke to me. And I release my faith right now. I call that tent in. I call in the vehicle to carry that tent. I call in the people to help with the tent. In Jesus' name. I call them in from the north, south, east, and west. I call in abundance of labors. Abundance of labors. In Jesus' name. I bless this offering. And let it be used for your kingdom. And for your glory. In Jesus' mighty, majestic name, amen. 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 Glory to God. You see, I'm not playing games with this thing. This is this is what I, this is the way I started out in ministry. Tent meetings, tent revivals. I'm going to see if I can locate one of my past eight VHSs that I did tent revivals. I'm going to see if I locate one and bring it and just put it up on the screen and show it. Amen. So people can see that I'm not lying. 
<laughs> I know you know I'm not lying. Why would I give it a lie about something like that? I don't lie. I don't practice lying. I practice telling the truth. The, the devil was a liar from the beginning. He's the father of lies. Why would I want to change your world? Change, change relationships now. I'd rather stay in, stay in the right relationship with God by telling you the truth. Amen. So right now, I want to pray. You may be here today and you say, Pastor, I made mistakes. I, I, I gave my heart to the Lord, but I made mistakes. And because uh, for some reason, I backslid and, and I want, I need prayer today. You may be listening to me and say, Pastor, I never give my heart to the Lord. And I definitely need prayer today. I want to give my heart to the Lord today. Amen. Or you may say, Pastor, I've been born again, but I've never received the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. I want this gift, and I believe that I receive this gift now, tonight. Amen. Or you may say, Pastor, I have been born again, and I've been in church all my life, but right now I'm looking for a place where I can call church home. And, and I need something, some, I need a, a strong church. Amen. If you're looking for a church, a place where you can call home, if you're looking for someone that's going to teach you the word and minister to you the love of God and will not hold back just because someone may not want to live right, you know, then you, want, you might want to consider a good church that's been appointed by God. And I believe that we've been appointed by God. And I'm not saying other churches have not been appointed by God, but I know that God called me to do what I'm doing. I can't speak for everybody else. Amen. Now, I'm going to give you an opportunity to come to the Lord Jesus Christ right now. I'm going to give you an opportunity to be born again. I'm going to give you an opportunity to repent of your sin if you're a backslider. I'm going to give you an opportunity right now to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to give you an opportunity to become a church member here at this place where Jesus Christ is Lord. Father, I thank you now. And I pray for these people. Those that are listening by the internet and those that are here right now. I lift them up before you, Father. And I ask you, Father, to bring a deep conviction upon their hearts and upon their minds. That they will humble themselves and yield to you and your way of doing things. I thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Father, I pray for this man, this woman. They have never have made you the Lord of their life. You listen to me right now. You said, Pastor, that's me you talk to. I never made Jesus Christ Lord of my life. I want to be born again. I want to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. I want to repent of my sin today. If that's you, I want to pray for you right now. Just say this prayer with me. And those of you, you might be a backslid. You might be, you might have backslid, and you want to rededicate your life to the Lord right now. This is your opportunity to rededicate your life to the Lord. At the same time that I'm praying for those to receive salvation, you say the same prayer. Rededicate your life to the Lord, and I guarantee you, you'll be glad you did because God is going to hear your heart. He's going to hear your prayer, and he's going to come to your rescue and deliver you from the powers of darkness. I believe that with all my heart. Say this prayer with me right now. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Create in me a right spirit and renew in me a clean heart. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. And that you died for my sin. Because I believe this. And confess it with my mouth. According to your word. I am saved. Thank you Jesus. For saving me. Oh hallelujah. Glory to God. You've never been filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Then receive the gift right now. Father. You said if anyone asks for the gift. That you would not give them a stone or a serpent. But you would give them exactly what they asked for. Father, I ask you to baptize them right now in the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gives them the utterance. I thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Receive the gift now in Jesus' name. Amen. You hear, you look for a church home? Father, I pray for that one that is looking for a church home. I ask you, Father, that you will direct their steps. Let your word be a lamp to their feet and a light unto their path direct them in the way they should go and I give you glory and praise for it now in Jesus name and direct them to 2925 Fulton Avenue, Sacramento, California 95821 we call them in now from the north, south, east and west in Jesus name, amen 
Well, remember, I've given four calls. Salvation, rededication, baptism, the Holy Spirit, and a church home. And I pray that God touch your heart in one of those areas. Amen. Now, if you have a special prayer request, I want to pray with you. If you have a special prayer request, I want to pray for you now. If you come now, I want to pray with you right now. Special prayer request. Anyone? Amen. Special prayer request. Amen. It was turned off. Was it still getting it? Father, in the name of Jesus, that you, Lord God, will have your way in this family and in the relationships of this, of this son and this, and this young lady. God, only you, Father, can bring this to a place where there will be peace amongst everyone. I come against that spirit that is trying to put a wedge in this family. I come against that spirit of anger, resentment, in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you and I lose you from your assignment. Now, Father, I release the spirit of love, peace, compassion. I release the, the spirit of, 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 of you, Lord God, of spirit of righteousness and holiness upon this family. Now, Lord, I ask you to have your way. Have your way. And God, let every demonic situation that have raised itself up be turned around. Let it be turned around that your name will be glorified. And Father, I thank you and I bless you now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Love you. Amen. Just be peace. Just be at peace. Amen. Come on, family. The whole, the whole bunch of you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless this family. I thank you, Lord God, that your hand rests upon this family and that you will bring them, Father, to that place where they will experience the abundance of your grace and your mercy, Lord God. I release the peace of God that surpasses all understanding upon their hearts and their mind. And God, I ask you to have your way. I bless them, Father. I bless them in the name of the Father. I bless them in the name of the Son. And I bless them in the name of the Holy Ghost. And I give you glory and praise for them now in Jesus' name. Now, Father, raise them up. Raise them up to be that family that you created them to be. Let them be an example to many. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You received that? Amen. Amen. Anybody else need prayer? Want prayer? Amen. Then let us all stand up and let us go home. Amen. Huh? Oh, yeah. We have some ice cream in the back. Those that want some ice cream. Yeah. Let's have a little scoop of ice cream tonight before we go home. Amen. So, Father, I thank you for this time together. I thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to meet this evening. Now, Father, I release your blessings upon every one of them. And those on the sound of my voice that are viewing or listening by the internet, I release your blessing upon them, Father. And I ask you, Lord God, that you would have your way. Touch ministers set free by the power of your spirit. Help us to stand our ground when we are confronted by our enemies. That we will not give in, that we will not run, but that we will stand our ground. I give you glory and praise right now in Jesus' name. I bless them now. Amen and amen. God bless you. We'll 
see y'all tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, 8.30. Those that are going to come to pray, remember, I'm going to be out of town. Sister Beverly's going to be here. She's going to be watching over the church while we're gone. And then on Saturday, my wife will be back to handle the Saturday night service. And I'll be back on Sunday night. Perhaps Sunday. Well, I won't, uh, she's going to have all day Sunday service. So y'all be blessed. We love you. Thank y'all for y'all support. We love you. Amen. God bless. You got it already turned off back there? Yeah. Beverly, you turn that off? I want to thank all of you for joining us tonight here at New Life in Christ Jesus Church where Jesus Christ is glorified. And I want to thank you for joining us. Amen. And I pray that today God ministered to your heart as well as he did I was here. I enjoyed the word as the word went forward. It ministered to my heart. And I pray that your heart was ministered to us. God bless you. This is Pastor Larry. Remember, be blessed. Till the next time. Bye-bye.